Hello everyone, so I'm back. This is my mayo chup that I've made myself. Now I know stores sell it, but I prefer to make it myself. And we're having mayo chup with tater tots. And I also have a giant pickle because giant pickles are cool and some roast beef and cheddar sliders which I have added my new favorite hot sauce now before we get to today's discussion I want to give out a quick warning that some topics might be discussed that might be uncomfortable with some people so if you're uncomfortable with discussions about um, death and death related topics stop now so anyway the reason why I almost didn't do this video today is because we've recently experienced a death that was very close to the family not in the family just close especially close to my husband and it was a very shocking and upsetting event because a it happened kind of without warning i mean we kind of knew that the situation could result in something like this happening but we all had hope that it wouldn't we all had hope that he was going to go home and he was going to possibly get healthier and that he had more time and it just didn't happen that way. Now, I'm not going to name any names because I just don't feel that's right. My tea. And, um, but my heart does go out to his parents. The second thing is that he was 19, which in my eyes is still a child. A child who is just starting to experience life. Now, something should be known about this child. He's had a rough life. Even though he had a great life, his health was not always in the best situation. And for that, my heart really goes out to the family and to him, even though he has passed on, you know, because it seems like he just always struggled. Even when things were going good, it had to be on his mind that things could go bad. And that is probably more upsetting than anything. So, going into that, you know, how do you cope with such a young death? And I've, you know, known children, of course, who have died younger, and that's upsetting, and it's heartbreaking. It's horrible when any loved one passes away, but when they pass away young, it just seems like it takes on a whole new form of tragedy. And how do you cope? How do you cope with you know, the saying goes, you're, you're not supposed to bury your child. Your child is supposed to bury you. And that's why my heart goes out so much to this family, because now they're tasked with burying their child. And that is an experience that no parent should have to go through. And I'm sure that many of you share my sentiment when I say, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with this family because, you know, it's just, a, it's just a tragic thing to hear about that a young one has passed away. Even, you know, if somebody says, well, he was grown. <laughs> he was 19. In my eyes, he's still a baby. You know, that's still a child. He was just experiencing life. So, you know, either way you look at it, it's tragic. Um, you know, one thing I like about... Um, and those who those of you who follow Dr. Phil is that when he's speaking about the death of a young child, he always tells the parent, and this is something he seems to stress on, to remember the good times, not to dwell on their passing, not to dwell on the end moments, but to think about all the joy that you spent with that child during their life and all the joy that they brought you and all the joy that you brought them 
to try not to dwell on those last moments because that's not going to help you heal. Yes, you're going to mourn. It's a natural phase. But don't dwell because if you dwell, then you'll find yourself in a position where you can't move on. And that's not, that's not what that child would want. That child would want you to heal and remember them in a good way. Remember them in a celebratory way. But do go through your grieving process. It's a part of life. It's a natural part of losing someone you love. Don't skip grieving and think, well, I have to go straight into trying to be happy because that's not that's not going to help either grieve do your grieving it's it's healthy it's natural and then start remembering your child or that child in a more positive light like i said remembering the good times don't just dwell on the bad times celebrate their life what they gave what they brought the memories they left you with <clears throat> because that's how you want to remember that child. And it's difficult for me as a mother to speak on this because I have children. And, you know, even though my children are healthy, anything can happen. Anything can occur in our lives that cut our lives tragically short. Like I said, this was going to be a heavy topic. So if you're uncomfortable with death or it makes, or if you've just experienced the death and maybe this hits on a sore note, I would, you know, discourage continuing. Um, I can't say that this child was very loved. He was loved by so many, and so many came together and pulled for him and helped him and was there by his side. He was never alone, and he was always um, supported and backed by his friends and family. So he was a very loved individual. I don't know anybody who didn't love this child. <coughs> so that's one thing to look at in a positive light. He was loved by many people. And while we have not attended the funeral yet, this is a very fresh death. It just occurred yesterday. Again, not naming names. And we have not had a funeral to attend. I am positive that it's going to be full. It is of all his family and all his loved ones and all of his friends there to say their goodbyes and to just support one another. <clears throat> Sorry support one another and to just you know show their love for this person because this person was very loved and I know myself if I can make it I myself am going to be there along with my husband and um, we'll probably leave the children at home because that's just respectful and I know that even though um, we loved him they don't really know him. And unfortunately, I don't know him. I didn't know him as well as my husband did. He was closer. But I did know a lot about him. I did meet him on several occasions. He had a very good personality. He was very upbeat. Despite the tragedies and the, the problems and the health issues and the just, you know, the, the, enorm the enormity of what he was facing, he managed to keep a smile on his face. And he showed love and concern for people who were probably better off than he was. But he took time out of his day to check on people and make sure that everybody in his life was okay and that they were well taken care of. He was a very good, what I'm trying to say is that he's a very good hearted person. And, um, the loss is just so very great because he was just a good soul. Um, you know, other tips for 
dealing, which I'm sure everybody has their own way. But when you have different um, mental issues, such as I have PTSD, so sometimes mental issues can make it more complicated to deal with death. It uh, plays with the mind more, and it can make it a very difficult situation to actually deal with. You know, sometimes going to a therapist speaking to somebody about if you're having troubling thoughts or troubling feelings, um, if you're having trouble accepting the person's death. Yeah, that's a big thing for some, for some people. Accepting that the person is no longer there. Accepting that they're not a part of their everyday life anymore. And I can, I can understand how that's hard to accept. It really is. Especially if that person was an everyday part of your life and then all of a sudden they're gone. Such as a spouse or a sibling or a child. I can imagine. I, I, I really can. I can see how it would be so difficult to accept that that person is no longer a part of your life. And sometimes a therapist can help you accept. It's hard. It's even uncomfortable. But sometimes it's necessary. And my lighting is changing horribly. I don't know why. I'm sorry for that. I don't know what it is. It's something in the house. I think we have a little bit of bad weather. I think my lights are actually kind of fluctuating. We might lose our electricity here soon. I don't know. <laughs> There's no telling with the area that I'm in with our weather. It's like, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. That's very much the truth here. But I digress. Anyway, sorry about that. I get sidetracked when I notice something. I was doing it bad. Anyway, sorry. Um, sometimes getting away from stuff. Now, I'm not saying um, seclude yourself because that could lead to unhealthy thoughts and unhealthy feelings. But sometimes finding a quiet place and just being away from all that for a little while, just resting or um, reading a book or listening to music and just trying to quiet your mind. Sometimes it helps. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you're in the middle of full grieving because isolating yourself could be very bad if you're still just newly grieving. I would not suggest isolating yourself. But if it's been a while and you're still having trouble finding peace, maybe some time to yourself to kind of quiet your mind and get out of the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Maybe that'll help. It depends. And while this young man was not actually family, I know one day it will happen to us. It happens to everybody. I'm not saying that we're going to lose a child, but we're going to lose a loved one. Be it a grandparent or a parent or something down the line, an aunt, an uncle or something like that. It's going to happen because that's just, that's just life and death. That's how it works, which I don't have to explain that to a lot of you. A lot of you know many of you have had a death in your family. It may some of you may be actually dealing with recent death in your family. And if you are, my heart goes out to you. It really does. I'm sorry. I hope this isn't too upsetting. I hope you find it healing. And um if you don't, like I said, I, I don't take any grievance to anyone who chooses not to watch this video because 
death is painful. Before you can heal, you go through the pain. And I completely understand, no judgment. You know, at a later time in life, you may come back and say, you know what? I can watch this now without it upsetting me. And I can accept my loss that I couldn't accept back then. And I'll be here. I don't care if it's a year from now. If you message and I get the notification, I will be here and I will answer. And there will be no animosity towards you. I completely understand. Um, other things, you know, could be, this is going to sound weird, but exercising, going for a jog, um, hitting your local gym just to get your mind off of what's going on. Just to free up your mind and get some of those positive hormones flowing through your brain. Is that going to take care of the pain of your lost one, your lost loved one? Well, no. No, of course not. Can it help? You maybe feel like you can better accept it and face it and deal with it a little more. For some, maybe. Yeah, it can. Because we all know when we exercise, those endorphins are released. And it can bring you to a place of, you know, maybe a slighter, better peace. Um, in the end, we all grieve in our own way. And it's incredibly difficult, it's incredibly painful, and it's incredibly challenging. But the main thing is to remember that. It's going to end one day. Your, your grieving is going to end. You're going to be able to remember this person in a more peaceful way. Things are going to get better. It may not look like it right now, but it will. And um, for that young man's family, you know, one day it won't be so painful. It's still going to hurt a little, but it's not going to be as bad as it is now. You're going to remember him more with a peace of mind rather than a mind of grievance. And I think I'm just going to cut this video short today because, you know, it is kind of a heavy topic and I don't want to just drag on about the same thing. But to all of my viewers, I love you and I pray that everything's going well in your life and if it's not, then I hope that you find peace and that you're able to come out of this whatever situation you're in, that you're able to come out on the other side in a more peaceful set of mind. And if I can help in any way, I'm always here under Miss Lucid Dreams. So I'm just going to say goodbye for now. I'm going to finish my meal and I'm going to wish you all a very blessed day. Bye.